Schwarz beer is German black lager and it's a beer of contradictions. By appearance, it looks like something that's deeply roasty and perhaps a little bitter. By taste, it's got that clean German lager taste. I'm going to brew one of those up. Plus, it's time for some DIY improvements. I'm going to drill some holes in my Kieser. There's a highway out of this town And the stars light it up as they shine on down Hi, I'm Martin Keane and I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beer styles and I have made it into the dark German beer category. So let's get straight into it. What is in this beer? Well, I have all of the ingredients crushed up here. It's smelling delicious. The base malt for this is a combination of German Pilsner malt and dark Munich malt or Munich 10. So I have five pounds of German Pilsner malt and four pounds of Munich malt. Then for specialty grains, well, I'm adding in eight ounces of Caramunic 1. The thing is, so far, none of this is going to get me a very black lager. And we can go pretty dark with this. We can go up to an SRM of 30, and I'm going to push it as close to that as I can. So to get that color, I am adding in Carafe 2, eight ounces of that. And I think eight ounces is the most Carafe 2 I've added to any beer so far. And I'm adding in four ounces of deep, dark, roasty chocolate malt. The girl's always, is always on the first Mashing in at 152 Fahrenheit, I'm looking to get to a pre-boil gravity of 1050 for a beer that will be about 5.1%. That should be uh, about 60 minutes of mashing or however long it takes me to run my errands and get back to the basement. Mash is done, I'm draining down to the boil kettle, so now's a good time to think about hops. Now, this beer has a lot of malty sweetness in it right now. We've got all of that German Pilsner malt and the Munich malt as well. And we want to actually balance that out with a bit of hoppiness to get to an IBU of about 28. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to add Perle hops, one ounce of those at 60 minutes as my bittering hop. And then right at the end, I'm bringing out the Hallertau Mittelfrühe and I have one ounce of that which I'll put in with five minutes to go. So this week I've been making some changes to my Kieser, my chest freezer where I keep my kegs. Now I've been brewing quite a lot of beer recently, you may have noticed, and I've been running out of space where to keep the kegs and keep them cold. Now the Kieser system that I have right now has room for four kegs plus two gas canisters, one for CO2 and one for nitrogen, plus a four-way regulator for the CO2. What I wanted to do was to upgrade that so that I had room for six kegs in the Kieser instead of four. And to do that, I have taken out the CO2 and nitrogen canisters and put them on the outside of the chest freezer. So what this boils down to is that I need to drill holes in the collar of my Kieser to enable the gas lines to run in and out. Now these are the parts that I'm using to do that. I have two of everything because I'm doing this for two lines, for a CO2 line and a nitrogen line. I've got two bulkhead fittings. I have swivel nuts and then I have some clamps to connect the tubing to that bulkhead. So what this means is I need to drill a couple of holes in Makiza. So this is the setup. I've got my 
six kegs in the Kiza now, along with my four-way CO2 regulator. And then coming out here, I've got my two gas lines, one going to a CO2 canister and the other going to a nitro canister. They're just out here, sat on the floor now. I'm no longer chilling them because, well, I really didn't need to do that. And in fact, it's much easier just to be able to look at the regulators here and see what pressure everything is set to than when they were stuck in this Kiza. Now I did this about a week ago. So far, no problems whatsoever, no leaks. So really happy. The, the only thing is I've got six kegs in here chilling now, but I've only got four beer taps. The gravity for this beer has indeed come out at 10.51. Before I can add the yeast, I need to chill this down to 50 Fahrenheit. I got pretty close today actually. I did make it into the 50s, but I have just moved the beer into my chest freezer where it is chilling. When it does reach 50, that's when I will add my yeast. This is WLP830 German Lager Yeast. Here we are, we're gonna do the tasting. I'm Lauren and I'm here obviously with Martin and we're gonna try this beer. Yeah, so I've got a, another dark beer for you. I see that. Yeah, this one this one came out at um, 10, 12 gravity, 5.1% beer and it is a Schwarz beer which is German for black lager, which you could probably tell from the appearance, right? This is quite dark. Yeah. Aroma, like I said, like it doesn't smell stouty. It's more of like a malty smell. Yeah, I would agree. Very malty. Um, no, no sort of notable hop aroma. Okay, let's go with the taste. Okay. Like the last one, I'm pleasantly surprised because because of the look of it, I would never like go and get this at the bar. I would never buy this at the store just because of the color it is. But it is like very light kind of dry at the same time but like it has those um the yeasty comments what, comments that's not right the yeasty notes that kind of sticks on your palate well you're getting good at this <laughs> i mean <laughs> <laughs> i would agree with all those things it, it's it's dry it is definitely not a sweet beer i think the last beer was definitely had a sweet a little bit taste more no no uh sweetness to it mm -hmm. very malty uh no sort of burnt flavor coffee flavor nothing yeah. like that uh, clean tasting, easy to drink, light bodied, I think, despite its appearance. So, yeah. yeah. So I appreciate you having me on the TV. <laughs> the TV. <laughs> <laughs> the computer, your laptop, your phone, whatever you're watching, I appreciate you having me here. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs>